Trapped by the belief that I'm not good enough, bound by the limitations and the lies that consumed my world, this was me. It wasn't until I took the biggest leap in my life to know and trust the power within. And it was at that moment I made a choice. My past will not define me anymore. Hello, I am Terry Cardula, and I know I am not alone in this. Over the years, I have found that the number one mistake that we make is that we get in the way of our own success story. Yes, I said it. On this show, together we'll tackle limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, getting stuck, fear, doubt, overwhelm, and the imposter syndrome. Join us on this journey designed to transport you beyond your limitations to a world where anything is possible. This is Talking with Terry. Hi, and welcome back to Talking with Terry, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And I'm delighted to our, have our guest today, Lisa Jimenez, mm-hmm. winning. Um, <laughs> she's a mindset coach, an international speaker, trainer, and best selling author. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much, Terry. What a joy to be here. Yes, I'm excited. And I was just telling you right before we went on that. Um, We have very similar paths and very similar stuff we talk about. And what, what brings me great joy when I interview folks that have similar backgrounds and trainings and things, it just, it, I guess for me, it comes from that place of abundance because we need like 10 million more of us Mm -hmm. out here spreading and doing this work. And so, you know, I just, I feel like it's so yummy to find a like-minded person. So we'll see what is possible in this conversation today. Um, so I want for folks that have not heard about you yet, um, I want them, you know, to bring us up to speed, kind of give us a backstory, kind of how you came to be where you're at today. But I also just want you to, you know, look at, you know, thinking it from the views of like, what have been your challenges or barriers that you've had to overcome? Because I think mm-hmm. so often we look at people who we think is quote successful and we think, oh my goodness, I could never do that. Mm-hmm. They did blah, 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 right? And I think that there's power in the story. There's power in what we've had to overcome and giving people permission to you know, step into their power as well. Mm-hmm. So take it away. I love it. I love to share that because I love that language of stepping into your power. That was my biggest barrier. I, one, I didn't know I had power. <laughs> and two, no way would I step into it if I even recognized it. So yes. I started my whole life in a simple small town in Northern California called Paradise, California. And as many of you know, two and a half years ago, it burned to the ground. And so it's just amazing to see the resilience of that town, the resilience of the people that live in paradise. And I think that's the heart of who I am, resilience. But here's the challenge, Terry, when you know you are resilient, often the subconscious mind becomes wired at finding problems so that you can overcome because you are an overcomer. (laughs) Yeah. Or, or you're resilient and you're like, okay, I got this. I, I love, let's just, let's just hit it out of the park right now, because I think I just want to dive into this because I think that's how we become addicted. What I call addicted to the struggle. Right. And I was a, um, previous, um, uh, uh what do I want to say? I, I had a severe addiction to struggle and it was like very early on again, kind of what you just said is like, okay, I understand that I can, I can do tough stuff. I understand that I can work through it and I'm never, you're never given more than what you can handle. Right. But there's a, there's a, there's a fine line of like creating it so that you can, you know, so that you can overcome it mm-hmm. instead of just letting you know, life create some more ease in your life. Right. Yeah, exactly. And getting into the flow of it. And here's yeah. my language, allowing God and his infinite wisdom to richly bless you and yeah. of blocking all the goodness or blocking the rich blessings or blocking even your own potential. So starting this whole conversation off, Terry, with the language of stepping into your power, let's have that be the common denominator of what we would really hope for each one of you, all of your listeners that that you would step into your power. And that means two things. Number one, you have to claim your power. You have to stand in confidence and declare, I am powerful. I have power. There is power within me. And maybe you don't feel powerful right now. Maybe you've been just hit in the gut with this global pandemic. I get it. We've, we had to cancel so many events and seminars and book signings. My book launched 
uh, my own retreats. I had to on the dime shift my focus and start having retreats with 10 people or less <laughs> because wow. the states and the areas that I had the retreats wouldn't allow for gatherings of more than 10 people. Yeah. Uh, so just, I, I want to really just hit home too, for all your listeners that you will never be able to, to really experience the power that's within you. I'm talking about spiritual power. Yeah. Well, you claim it until you stop hiding that spiritual power and yes. you start like saying, I'm going to celebrate this beautiful gift that I have within me, my own spiritual essence, my own spiritual power. And in quantum physics, we call that pure potential energy, who we yes. really are, which is pure potential energy energy. Anything is possible with that kind of mindset of yes. pure potential energy. Another word for that is your spiritual essence. Yes. So claiming that power was my biggest detriment in my entire life. I, I didn't even know I had power. I didn't even know I could claim it. So I started uh, living life just super simple and my biggest aspiration, which is a beautiful aspiration, but I must share this with you because this was my biggest breakthrough. I have, I've had two huge breakthroughs in my life. The first one was <laughs> being like settling. Like I would, I set goals for myself when I was a kid, Terry. And my goal was to be a school teacher and to be a mom, a wife and a mother. And that's a beautiful goal. That's a wonderful yeah. aspiration. But Absolutely. I accomplished that at 29 and a half years old. Well, <laughs> what do you do in life when you're on your 30th birthday and you hit your life goal? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. So my, you have to build another goal. You have to create yes. another goal. You have to have another aspiration. I didn't have the mindset or the, even the thought process to think that I could have another goal. So my, my biggest breakthrough was actually accepting my power in other areas of my life up and above and beyond being a mother, a wife and a school teacher. So yeah. how it happened for me is in 1991, mm -hmm. I was teaching class at, at Atlantic West elementary in South Florida. And the principal asked me to give a seminar that Saturday at the PTA Association, Parent Teacher Association. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's a seminar? You know, like, okay, <laughs> what do you want That's me great. to speak on? And she said, I want you to just give a speech on how to motivate students because you have a really motivational classroom and your kids love showing up and teaching or, or and learning. And, and I taught fifth grade third grade and second grade. And I had similar results in every age group of the elementary school. So I gave this speech and here's the bottom line. There was a woman in that audience of about 150 people who was the wife of the CEO of IBM. Now IBM back in the 1990s in Boca Raton, Florida, huge yeah. corporation. Yeah. She came up to me and asked me if she said, my husband is looking for sales trainers all the time and motivational speakers. Would you come in and give a speech for his sales group? Do you give keynote addresses? I'm like, oh my gosh, what's a keynote address? Now what's a keynote? <laughs> but what do you always say when the, someone asks you something, even with your knees shaking, yes. you say, yes, yes. I can yes, do that. Do. Let's talk more about that. So I said, yeah, sure. What are you looking for? And she told me her, the budget that I was actually going to get paid for this. So I think my first breakthrough was giving myself permission to say yes to this new life called motivational speaking, called yeah. sales training, when yeah. it found me. I, I, that was not a goal of mine. That was not an aspiration. And just saying yes, even with my knees shaking, saying yes and leaping outside my comfort zone, knowing that God has my back. Yes. If I got an opportunity. It must be God, God ordained. And I will say yes, even with yes. my knees shaking. So that's first, the first mindset reset lesson. I want all your listeners to listen to is just, just say yes, because it is God ordained when people ask you to do things. And, if and when we, and we feel protected and we feel like the, you know, the universe, the spirit, God, angels, like our life force mm. has our back. Yes. And that is so powerful. Back. And, yes. and if you are being asked to do something, if you have a desire in your heart, you must believe that the universe wants you to fulfill on that. Like yes. what you want 
once you, Bob Proctor, so brilliantly said, yes. what you want once you. So stop denying your own passions yes. and start saying yes to what you really want because you can have it. And, and your desires is bringing enlightenment to this planet. It's actually causing Agreed. balance on your, uh, in this planet. Yes. So what you want once you, that was my first breakthrough, Terry, to like, just give myself permission to think bigger than how I ever thought. Say yes to an opportunity, even though my knees were shaking and I had anxiety attacks before I gave that speech. And even <laughs> right before I step up on the platform, because that radically transformed my life. Yes. And then over the next several months, I was asked even more times to give speaking engagements. And over the next several months and even into a year, I had to manage and deal with the inner turmoil. Now, yes. Here's what I want to say to all your listeners. It's normal to have this inner turmoil. In my book, Mindset Reset, I call it the, the, the false facade. It's, it's, you think you're like, who am I? to do yes. this. Who, that's normal. Anytime you're growing and you're stepping outside your comfort zone, there's going to be an inner angst. Yeah. It's normal. Don't take that as a sign that you have to pull back. Take it as a sign that you have to move forward Agreed. and just get comfortable yeah. with being uncomfortable. 1000%. So, yes. It's, it's about taking I always go back to like that heart core centered place where it goes, you know, what is that knowing that we know that we just, we can't turn it off, but we sometimes mm -hmm. will silence it or be like, oh, I can't, I can't, you know, we have mm -hmm. all these excuses. We have all this external, internal, like self-doubt, whatever it's happening for us, but it's like really taking and stepping into and knowing and trusting mm -hmm. um, that we are ready. Like these opportunities, mm -hmm. these circumstances, these possibilities are showing up when we're ready to do it. Mm -hmm. And it, you're absolutely, you're praising mm -hmm. to the, you know, you know, praising to the choir here. I love yeah, it. Yeah. And then the other aspect of that. So here's what I, what I want your listeners to take away is, is to know that what you want wants you. And then just to, to let go of that mental chatter of, I can't, I don't know. I'm nervous. The more you say, I can't, I don't know. I'm nervous. The more you create that frequency. Yes. And if you would just discipline yourself to quiet the mind, you would hear spirit move you. Yes. You would hear, pick up the phone and call Jim. Who's Jim? I don't know. You'll figure it out. Go, go <laughs> see Alice. Yes. Alice. Yes. Oh my gosh. And Alice comes into your life. Like you are so divinely guided. You just have to discipline your mind, make it sit like a dog. I said, sit down. <laughs> exactly. I love it. that power yes. to quiet the mind. And then all the messages come in, yes. all the inspired actions come about. But so when you leap outside your comfort zone, because you know, the universe has my back, God has my back, yes. angels have my back, whatever yes. is your label, it yes. has your back. And yes. that life force wants what you want. It yes. wants you to fulfill and manifest on your heart's desire because it brings balance to the planet. You're, you're, when you and I think we need that so much right now, right? Like we need to, we, we have got to have people wake up yeah. to and step into their mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. And because the more that we get people to step into that power, you're absolutely right. Vibra vibrationally, we raise mm -hmm. the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. We raise the, you know, potency, if you will, mm -hmm. of our planet. Mm -hmm. And we require everyone mm -hmm. at this moment. I think it's like this one of these moments is, you know, I was literally having dinner with a friend last night and we were talking about, I said, the next pandemic is going to be a mental health pandemic. And I think I've like, I think that we're in this, like we have just seen the mental health, mm -hmm. like take a massive crumble mm -hmm. um, in the last few months. You know, mm -hmm. I think we've hit the breaking point. So mm -hmm. I, good. Think right now, good. I think right now, right now, because anymore. That, good. I know, right? people are actually people are feeling. So yeah. here's another thing I want your listeners yeah. to take away from this is stop making yourself wrong. Yes. For feeling anxiety. Stop yes. making yourself wrong for your own breakthrough breakdowns. Yes. Stop making yourself wrong. This is the limiting mindset. This is yes. the sabotage of our own mindset, sabotaging you because you think, oh, I'm the only one who has anxiety. Oh, I shouldn't feel fear. Oh, I should be over this by now. Oh, I should forgive easier. No, you're human. Yes. Start embracing your human condition. The human condition is challenging, but you are not 
your human condition. You are a pure potential energy of light and, yes. and possibility and spiritual nature. So if you would just quiet the mind, release the desire to judge yourself because it is a habitual pattern. It is, a, it, is. it is a desire. It is a habitual pattern. It's the human condition. And here it is. Grow yourself into your spiritual essence so big that you can be with your anxiety. You can be with your fear. Yes. You're that big. You're that loving of yourself yes. that you actually can be with your own human frailties. I yes. can be with you, anxiety. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong here. I'm just having an experience of my human condition. Do you know how quickly you can dissolve anxiety and fear and even panic when you can just embrace your human condition? Embrace the duality of you, which is actually step number one of my mindset yes. reset formula. You embrace that you have a human condition and you embrace that you have a spiritual condition, a spiritual reality. And yes. when you can be in both, you have mastered alignment. You have mastered why we're here on this planet, that we are truly spiritual beings having this human condition as Wayne Dyer so brilliantly said. Yes. And in embracing that reality, wow, there's no stopping you in your spiritual essence, in your spiritual power. But the first step in, it, in embracing your spiritual nature is loving your human condition. Yeah. Loving your frailties. It's okay. Stop judging yourself. Give your, liberate yourself and the fear will dissolve. The anxiety will dissolve. The breakdowns will be like, oops, there it is. Oh, so I yeah. had a breakdown. Oops, there yes. it is. <laughs> there it is. You the know, problem is we, when we make a problem out of a problem. Yes. And that's yes. the human condition. The human condition is to judge, is to make predict, it wrong, to yep. predict, and to prefer. What if you just yes. stop preferring, predicting, and judging, especially yes. yourself? Yes. You release and dissolve the fear, anxiety, and you liberate yourself to be who you really are, that pure potential energy. It's, I, I call it love, but it's, love is so overused. Do you agree? So it's, it's just this amazing light of who you really are. Yeah. That's and it powerful. starts with self-acceptance, self-love. Yes. yes. And a okay. light heart. So you start laughing at yourself. Oh, yes. so I'm not nervous. So I had yes. an anxiety attack. Oops, there it is. Yes. And I think that that's powerful. I, th I think that's a beautiful message because I think so often we've been conditioned mm -hmm. and we have gone through life in a habitual way, mm -hmm. showing up the same way, the same behaviors, the same situations. When, when, when a crisis happens, we like, mm -hmm. you know, again, the judgment of that crisis, we perceive it as a crisis instead of seeing it as a gift. And I literally just mm -hmm. had this conversation the other day. <laughs> I had something that was really annoying show up in my life. And I had, I was trying to explain it to one of my clients. Cause she was like, well, what, what is that like for you? And I was like, okay. So I said, you know how, like back in the day I would be like, oh, this is bad and wrong. And I'd make judgments that this bad, wrong, you know, all this stuff. And mm -hmm. now I am bad and wrong because of this happening. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now I said, you know, over the years and continue, and I continue to help support, you know, teaching people mindset and digging into the quantum physics and principles and all this stuff. And I said, now when things are happening, you know, outside of me. And I, and at the same time, I really wanted to be annoyed and angry at this situation happening. But at the same time, it was almost like this, like, um, I don't know how I can explain it. There was this, 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 this piece that was this paradigm, that was these two paradigms that were being presented to me. And it's like, okay. And I, at the same time, the gifts were being presented as well. And I was like, but I kind of just want to be annoyed. <laughs> And so yeah. I kind of made fun of it. And I'm like, I just wanted to be annoyed at it. And I wanted to be angry at it, but I wasn't because like at the same time I could see like all the gifts and I'm like, okay, thank you. The gifts far outweigh what I was going to perceive it, but there's power in perception, right? There's power in, you know, what we're seeing. If we can stop our brains from going to the doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. And what if this was showing up for us, not to us mm -hmm. and having that ability to shift that. And I think that's always a, um, 
you know, a tapping into that, that's, I call it the switch where you're tapping into that switch. You can be aware of it. Like you were saying like that awareness mm-hmm. and, you know, making a choice because we, we mm-hmm. have power and choice. Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier is when we step into our power, we now know that, um, it's just a choice, right? It's mm-hmm. a choice that we're stepping into. It's a choice that the choices that we're making. And when we step into that, our power, our brilliance, our mm-hmm. magnetic being, your pure um, uh, potential energy, we allow ourselves to become these maths, massive magnets mm-hmm. where we start to attract yep. more and more of the experiences, the people, mm-hmm. the possibilities mm-hmm. um, that are here to, to, you know, take us on this journey to be a part of this journey. And it just Mm -hmm. gets easier. Yeah. And when you're in that flow in, I call it alignment in my book, when you're in that alignment, it's the sweetest moments. It is. It's the sweetest serendipity. It's the fortuitous. It's the miraculous. You just, nothing else will do. You must live in alignment when you start experiencing it, like nothing else will do. So you're so willing to let go of a guilt or, or be with anxiety or, or, tend to and give more forgiveness because nothing else will do but the sweet surrender of serendipity, the miraculous and alignment. But here's what I want to mention here before you go to the next topic is we must realize what we're up against. And here's the psychologist coming out in me. It is not just purely choosing. I choose this instead of this. You have to know what you're up against in retraining the brain. Yes. Because the body gets addicted to the chemicals. Yes. That get released when we have guilt. Yes. Anxiety, procrastination. Yes. Or judgment. So if you're not doing something in your life that actually is aware of how addicted we get, the body gets that you have an, uh, you know, you get angry and you blow up at someone, you're actually getting addicted to the adrenaline rush. You procrastinate on a consistent basis. Why? Because your body needs the rush of cortisol. Yeah. 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 So it's, this is what we're up against in retraining the brain. We have to see, oh, wow, this is, this is, it's literally an addiction and you will go through withdrawals when you start practicing moving into the choice of your spiritual nature, the choice of pure potential energy. That's what we're up against. And so again, don't judge yourself. It's a process of retraining the brain and allowing the body to reprogram, recalibrate itself so that it's not addicted to the cortisol, the, the adrenaline rush, because it is until it isn't. Agreed. Agreed. It is. We have these addictions until we don't. But there is that gap that we have to have patience with ourselves and just continue to, to, to move through that addiction rush, rush of the cortisol. That's why sometimes we get addicted to fear. We get addicted to guilt because our body needs the chemicals that get released when we feel that emotion. Be aware of that. Beautiful. Okay. I want to, I want to wrap up with, a. Oh, what is one of those game changing mm. tools, strategies, techniques, just one of your favorite things that mm-hmm. anyone at any level, any level of awareness could take today and be like, here's a tool that I can start working on today mm. and I can, I can increase my whatever by 10% or 20% or whatever it is. What is that one of those, you know, one of your favorite little tools that you like to teach? One of my very favorite mind shifts, I call them mind shifts in my book, is to use the mantra and believe it. You must resonate with this mantra. This is a declaration. And it is this, there's nothing wrong here. Mm. There's nothing wrong here. So you asked me my two breakthroughs of my life. The first one was internal, my own self-limiting beliefs and my, my, my lack of knowing my power. My second one was when I turned 40 years old. And my husband, my high school sweetheart, my husband of 18 years came home from work one day and said, I don't want to be married anymore. And over the next three months, I had to go through a separation and then deal with divorce and manage three children who mean the world to me, that they were stable and knew that they were loved, even though their mom and dad were experiencing what we call divorce. And wow, when I took on the mantra. And I mean, I felt it viscerally. 
there's nothing wrong here. I'm divinely guided. There's nothing wrong here. This is God ordained. This yes. is spirit ordained. And I didn't make my husband wrong for wanting to leave yeah. me. I yeah. didn't make my marriage wrong for only yeah. being 18 years long. I didn't yeah. make my family wrong for yeah. being, we, ugh, it gives me the chills. It's so powerful. We never called ourselves divorce. We called ourselves two families, yeah. one family, one family under two roofs. We are yeah. one family under two roofs. And it's yeah. been, gosh, Tara, it's been 13, 14 years. We're both remarried. Yeah. We've actually double dated <laughs> with our significant others, all four of us. That's beautiful. We've yeah. Had just tremendous experiences with our three children. And now Mark, my former husband, mm -hmm. has his own uh, baby child through yeah. his second marriage. But that was freedom for me. That liberated yeah. me to have this most expansive life where I didn't make myself wrong. I didn't make my former husband wrong. I didn't make my family wrong. And There's that is nothing. There is so here. much power in that. And I love that you, that lesson, I love the message that you're sending to, because I think that, um, as a therapist for almost 24, uh, 24, I almost said 24,000 years. That's what it feels like, but it's really in 24 years, but, um, <laughs> 24 years, but you know, we would have mm -hmm. families come in and they say, you know, what's the best time? What's, what do you recommend? Like, what's the best time to get divorced? And I said, never. I said, it doesn't matter if it, it's a child, mm -hmm. an infant, it doesn't matter if it's a child is a teenager or older, or even, you know, you know, older mm -hmm. in life, it doesn't matter because it still mm -hmm. stings. But I said mm -hmm. the biggest, you know, and I, and I, I'm a, I'm a big believer that some folks need to get divorced and should get divorced. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's some that, can make it work and, and, and it be beautiful. But at the same time, I said, the biggest factor on your children's lives is how you respond to the divorce, right? Or the separation or whatever that is. And if you guys have a positive experience, the kids will have a positive experience. So it comes back to the parents. So I just love your message because mm -hmm. I just want to second that and just say, yay for you. Because every time I see a family that's like you, I always say, you need to write a book about this. And I even like have a structure for you guys to write this book. I don't want to write it, but I want someone else to write. It. And I'll be like, I'll, I'll buy the books and I'll put them out in the counseling practice. And, and because I think it's so powerful, yeah. um, as a child of divorce, I understand mm -hmm. Um, that piece of it. And so I just, I think it's brilliant. And when you go so back to right the message, now, like, all, I'm not wrong. All of your yeah. listeners take out a pen and write on your hand. I know your mom <laughs> told you never to do that. There's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong here. here. And I want you to do that for several yes. days until it becomes who you are. Yes. And you look at that. You look at that. You look at that throughout the day. Yes. And then tomorrow morning when you take a shower, you got to write it again. Or when you're sleeping, you're like, I got it on yeah. my face now. You, you, like you wake up and, and your significant other says, wow, there's nothing there's wrong not here. Last night. There's nothing wrong What did here. I do? What did I do? <laughs> but what would your life look like? Yes. What would your life feel like if viscerally yes. you believed there's nothing wrong here? Yes. And I want to say that I'm going to go the other side because what's right about this, right? Mm. What's right in this moment? What's mm. right? Mm. What's, what's juicy? What can we pull from this? Mm. That's really yummy that we can pull from this. Um, because when we, we can start looking at those gifts and being in gratitude for, as you know, mm -hmm. being in that gratitude, um, it's one of the highest vibrating places. So again, mm. we go back to and gratitude. often our listeners can't get into gratitude yet because the yes. brain is wired at yes. judgment problems, predicting, preferring. So you yes. have to tell your brain and retrain your brain. There's nothing wrong here. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. I love it. Love it. This has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. So how do fi people find out about you more about you? They can go to lisajcoaching.com. That's my website, lisajcoaching.com. If you want to pick up some of my freebies, you can go to lisajcoaching.com forward slash freebies. And Love all it. of my uh, mastermind retreats are on there. My mindset reset events information is up there. The next one is in Maui, Hawaii, Beautiful. Maui in March of 2022. So please check that out and see if you resonate with that kind of coaching, that type of experience at lisajcoaching.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. This has been Thank such a delight. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Thank you for who you are and what you do for the world. Thank you. I am so grateful that you joined me for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, then there's just one thing that I would like you to do. Click to subscribe and leave me a rating and review. 
As my way to thank you, let's connect for a free consultation. Just reach out to me at talkingwithterry, that's T-E-R-I dot com to book your time.